for what and where are the biggest dangers in Mauna Loa Bay. The second theme for tonight for prompting some of your uh, testimony, what are the rules of the bay and what are those that are being or not being followed? And last, then lastly, how can the state and the community work together to make Mauna Loa Bay a safer place? And I think some of the things you're gonna hear from both the Coast Guard and the DLNR are going to be provocative. And some of the things that you have as handouts, you even see a piece of legislation, is gonna be very helpful for the dialogue that's coming. Well, good evening, Aloha. I'm Captain Barry Compagnoni. I'm the sector commander uh, here in Honolulu. My area of responsibility covers the state of Hawaii. And uh, the uh, really, I, what I wanted to do first is really express uh, the Coast Guard sympathies to the Lum family uh, the, and the, over that, the tragedy from October 4th. The, uh, you know, our goal as a marine safety agency is that every trip out on the water is a round trip. And the idea is that any time that anyone is on the water, that they're able to come back safely. The uh, search and rescue is the, is the primary mission of the United States Coast Guard. It's one of the, right along with Homeland Security, it is our number one mission. And it's been our number one mission since 1790. Uh, one of the things that we do is uh, we work throughout the communities around the country with local organizations to ensure that we're doing everything we can to make maritime, any activities on the water safe and people are able to enjoy the, the waters of the United States. One of the things that we do, we work very closely with partner agencies. Uh, I have to tell you that I, I speak with Laura Thielen, the chairperson for, the, for DLNR, probably about a couple of times a week on primarily boating safety and conservation types issue, type of issues. Same with Ed Underwood from uh, Dobor. We work very closely with the state. And actually the way that our system works is that the Coast Guard has some overall responsibility for maritime safety, but for inland waters and state waters that are three miles, uh, that extend out to three miles, we typically will work with the state as the state agency is responsible for that area. Uh, they're the, what we call the state boating law administrator. So what we do is we have a complementary kind of program that focuses on not only recreation recreational boating safety, but also education. Uh, but it's not, it, it's not just there, it doesn't stop there with, this, with the state agencies. I'd also like to point out one other person in the, in the room, Robin Bond from the Hawaii Ocean Safety Team. Uh, Robin? Uh, Robin chairs an organization that cuts across all government as well as the private sector to focus on how we can make the Hawaii waters more safe. Uh, and so uh, if you have not had an opportunity to participate in that uh, Hawaii Ocean Safety Team, I certainly would encourage you to do that uh, so that you can continue. There's another great venue for your concerns to be heard. Uh, really with, with that, what I wanted to do is just, again, just explain a little bit of not only what our role is, uh, but also some of the actions and activities that you might see with the Coast Guard. Uh, we have a uh, member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary here tonight, uh, Roland Zwicky, who is the, the, I'm sure that everyone is familiar with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, but if you're not, we have a, a volunteer group from around the country, 33,000 people uh, who are members of, the, of communities around the country. We have a very strong auxiliary program here in Hawaii. And their primary focus is on recreational boating safety and education. Uh, so the, uh, I've asked Roland to, uh, if there is an opportunity at uh, kind of a sidebar discussion to talk about some of the educational programs. And also there's some information on the table related to uh, the in information if you'd like to sign up for a boating education course. Uh, and really with that, what I wanted to do is I, I guess my primary uh, point to be here tonight is to listen. And uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, I'm, I'm again, Representative Ward, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, with that, I'll, I'd like to turn it back over to you.
Please welcome Laura Thielen, the director of the UNR. Thank you. Thank you. Can you folks hear me if I speak at this level? Um, thank you, Representative Ward, for inviting us here tonight. Um, I guess I, I wanted to begin by expressing our condolences on behalf of the department to the family of the young man who died. I have a 17-year-old um, daughter, and I cannot imagine what you're going through. So just God bless you all. We don't want this to happen ever again to anybody. Um, department of Land and Natural Resources is responsible for managing um, Hawaii's natural and cultural resources. We have a division of forestry and wildlife that takes care of the upland areas. We have a division of aquatic resources that takes care of the marine mammals, the corals, the fisheries to three miles out. We have a boating and ocean recreation division that manages the 20 small boat harbors and 25 piers and ramps around the state. We have a state parks division that manages 69 state parks and park reserves, um, just a, n a number of divisions around natural and cultural resources, historic preservation, uh, land division that manages the unencumbered state lands, about two million acres, and a conservation, Office of Conservation and Coastal Land that manages the, the uses in the conservation district. Um, what we're here tonight to talk about that's important to this community is Moanalua Bay, I think the primary thing tonight is the safety, the public safety with all the different users of the bay and the conflicts between the users. I think another area that's uh, very important to this community that we've heard time and again is restoring the resource because the bay has been badly damaged by runoff, uh, invasive algae species, and, and other activities. So I'm gonna talk a little bit tonight about some things that the department has been working with the community on around a combination of public safety and restoring the resource. And then after me, Ed Underwood, who's our administrator of the Boating and Ocean Recreation Division, is going to talk about the specific rules that are in place right now for Moanalua Bay. Uh, and then we're gonna listen closely to the, the comments and suggestions and ideas that you folks all have, uh, including whether any of those rules need to be amended or whether there needs to be other legislation. So uh, what I wanted to start talking about was a, I think a question that comes up a lot to me as chair of DLNR is user conflicts and enforcement probably the number one call that I get. And one of the reasons I started with explaining all the different things that we're responsible for is we do have a division of conservation and resource enforcement. You may be familiar with it, it's called DOCARE. We have about 100 officers for the entire state of Hawaii to manage all of the administrative rules and regulations for the entire Department of Land and Natural Resources from the tip of the mountains to three miles out to sea. Um, in comparison, the city and county of Honolulu has about 2,000 police officers. So what my predecessor did is, is he worked with the governor to increase the number of conservation resource enforcement officers. They were successful working with the legislature in increasing the size of that force, but even with that, said that we need to work more closely with communities and to have communities help us by being the eyes and ears within communities and to work with our enforcement division as well as our aquatics division on a combination of voluntary compliance and also restoring resources. 